Decks are washed. A steely predator roams the world's oceans, stalking its prey and striking without warning. The USS Texas, a submarine unlike any other. Its cruising depth is nearly 300 meters. Its weapons are among the world's deadliest, torpedoes, missiles, and special ops commandos. Its mission is to deliver a crushing blow wherever it's needed, against enemies at sea or on land. Now we explore the awesome technology behind the strength and power of the USS Texas. Pollution ready. Ship ready. Shooting to B-24. What makes this 120 meter long submarine invisible? Lower number two scope. Ready to respond to any threat. And able to keep 118 men alive at depths no human could otherwise survive. We reveal the secrets of the ultimate submarine. The USS Texas is on a classified mission. Strike three, no threat. Bearing zero nine eight. Our intel has shown that there is a super tanker en route to Norfolk carrying possible weapons of mass destruction. An oil tanker loaded with deadly weapons is sailing toward the coast. File left twenty reserve steady course two zero zero. If the Texas can't stop her, thousands of people could die. Yes. No other submarine is better equipped to deal with the crisis. Stand by. The USS Texas and her sister sub, the USS Virginia, are among the Navy's latest class of attack submarines. That makes the Texas one of the most sophisticated submarines ever built. She's 115 meters long, and weighs six and a half thousand tons. But she can maneuver through shallow coastal waters as easily as the deep ocean. Mission right now is to intercept this super tanker and destroy it using uh, ADCAP torpedoes. It looks like we're in a good position to achieve a firing position. In the blink of an eye, she sends the tanker to a watery grave. One, zero, four, this was just a training exercise but the crew of the Texas knows that next time could be the real thing. The Texas is one of the latest generation of ultimate submarines, and she represents a radical leap in submarine design. She's among the deepest, fastest, and longest running nuclear attack subs ever built. Submarines like the Texas are incredible weapons, weighing 7,000 tons, and yet able to become invisible and spot a potential enemy 1,600 kilometers away from deep under the water. But other submarines are now challenging their supremacy in stealth and firepower. And even an ultimate submarine can be prone to disaster. The work of an ultimate submarine begins long before its first dive. This has been the birthplace of the American submarine fleet for over a century. The USS Texas is the product of two shipyards, Electric Boat and Northrop Grumman and she's one of the first American warships to be designed entirely on a computer. John, let's take a close-up view of the auxiliary machinery room module. 
engineers are able to walk virtual crewmen through the engine room to perfect its layout. A tight fit that has to accommodate crew, engines, generators and propulsion machinery. Clash detection software tests the smallest details, like the opening and closing of weapon tube hatches. It can reveal any collision between hatch and clasp before construction begins. Finally, the design software sends the approved blueprints directly to the machines that cut the steel, shape the components and bend the pipes. The process used to build the Texas is just as revolutionary. Groton submarine makers used to build their boats from the inside out, working within the cramped space of the hull. But they build the Texas the opposite way, from the outside in. They construct separate modules of everything a submarine needs, the engine room, the torpedo room, and its nerve center, the command and control room. Each component then slides neatly into the hull. But an ingenious design alone can't guarantee that the Texas will survive in the real world, where it will face dark, airless depths, crushing water pressures, and hostile weapons. After five years on the factory floor, one million parts, 1,600 kilometers of fiber optics and cables, 14 million hours of labor and over 2 billion US dollars, the USS Texas is finally ready for action. Workers roll her 7,000 tons onto a giant floating dry dock, which then carefully delivers her to the sea. The sea will become both her home and her deadliest enemy. No human adversary threatens submarines like the deep ocean. The Texas and its sister sub carry 118 men each. And the ultimate submarine's most important mission is to take those men to a place they cannot otherwise survive. The crushing depths, hundreds of meters underwater, and keep them safe for months at a time. Most importantly, she must never fail to provide her crew with the most basic of all human needs, air. The first submariners only realized they were running out of oxygen when they started getting sick. Crews were sometimes actually poisoned by a combination of either the diesel fumes or the battery fumes. Early submarine crews tried to stay alive by using tanks of pressurized gas, snorkel tubes to draw clean air from the surface, and even chemicals that released oxygen. But the Texas has a revolutionary oxygen generator that solves this problem. Even when she's hundreds of meters underwater, her crew breathes better air than we do on the surface. Onboard sensors continuously monitor the air supply scrubbing it with filters that trap contaminants, remove carbon dioxide, and suck out excess moisture. And while she's submerged, the Texas replenishes its air from an unexpected source, the ocean around her. The submarine can actually turn seawater into clean air by separating its basic chemical components, hydrogen and oxygen. In just one hour, the Texas can extract over six cubic meters of oxygen, more than twice the amount a crew needs to survive. Yet submariners never truly breathe easy. The deeper they dive, the greater the danger becomes. Just how deep the USS Texas can dive is classified. The Navy will only admit to 240 meters, the height of the Eiffel Tower. Aboard the Texas, all that stands between life and death is seven and a half centimeters of metal. 
This high-pressure structural steel, called HY-100, forms the strongest submarine hull ever built. But the Texas's job is not just to survive, it's to fight and win. This ultimate submarine boasts one of the deadliest arsenals on Earth. But another nation is developing a torpedo so fast that the USS Texas may not even be able to detect it before it strikes. For a submarine to become a weapon, it must have incredible stealth and firepower. The US Navy's Virginia-class subs, the USS Texas and Virginia, are among the most powerful underwater weapons ever built. Last man down, hat secure. When these predators go into action, they dive out of sight like every other submarine. Decks awash. Four zero feet. Scopes awash. But the key to destroying an enemy is to see and hear it before it hears you. And the ultimate submarine has the most powerful underwater eyes and ears ever made. Of course, I have a news contact bearing 307, designated 063, and ATF Alpha 3. Captain, gain new submerged contact, Sierra 63, bearing 307 and ATF. Very well. Attention control. Sonar's gained new contact, Sierra 63. I intend to engage this contact with one ADCAP torpedo as soon as I have a firing solution. Earlier submarines had to scan the surface through a periscope. They couldn't see more than a few kilometers away. But the ultimate submarine sees the world through space-age cameras that can peer ten times as far. All stations coordinator Sierra 63, the contact bearing 307 is the contact of interest track Sierra 63. These cameras send crisp images back to the control room. So we have a contact that's about nine miles away. You can see how close we can uh, make them appear when we magnify the, the scope. An infrared laser rangefinder tells the crew the exact distance to the target, an enemy ship. Once Texas has locked on to its target, it's time to destroy it. The submarine's signature weapon is still the torpedo, made famous in World War II when German submarines hunted Allied warships in squadrons called wolf packs. An ultimate submarine is a wolf pack of one. It can carry 38 torpedoes, three times as many as the Type 7 German U-boat. Its bow houses four 53-centimeter torpedo tubes that can launch both torpedoes and missiles. Captain, I have a firing solution, sir. Very well. Firing point procedures, Sierra 63, tube 4. Historically, crews had to move and load the two-ton torpedoes by hand, a slow and dangerous process. Caution, guide stud must be lying, guide slide to bay tube. Today's submarines are fully automated, allowing torpedo men to load and reload tubes in one-third of the time. Solution ready. Ship ready. Shoot, tube four. Shooting to be tube four. Pressurized water propels the torpedo towards its target. A piston engine with two propellers maximizes the torpedo's power. Sonar holds on ship's unit running normally. But the torpedo isn't flying blind. It trails a wire that's plugged into the weapon system aboard the submarine, using data to navigate. The bomb accelerates to 32 knots, almost 60 kilometers an hour with a range of 13 kilometers. As it nears its target, the wire is cut and sonar takes over navigation. This one torpedo has the explosive power of 540 kilograms of TNT. Weapon is acquisition. If the torpedo misses its target, it can circle back around and re-attack. Exploder armed. Detonating below the ship. Loud explosion on the bearing of Sierra 63. There's one flaw in the ultimate submarine's torpedoes. Enemy sonar can hear them coming, 
giving the target a chance to escape before the torpedo strikes. But half a world away, engineers are building a new kind of torpedo, one that no one can detect, one that could even destroy an ultimate submarine. This is the birthplace of the Barracuda, the torpedo of tomorrow. Instead of a piston engine, it has a rocket engine. This can power the Barracuda through the water at 360 kilometers per hour, nearly four times as fast as the ultimate submarine's torpedoes. The Barracuda is so fast, it actually creates a pocket of air underwater. The only thing that touches the water is the nose cone that steers it. This is a phenomenon known as supercavitation. Moving through air produces less friction than moving through water, and less friction means greater speed. And it goes so fast that no target can possibly get out of the way in time, and it's just going to hit. Traveling faster than the speed of sound, the Barracuda actually outruns its own sound waves. Even an ultimate submarine sonar may not hear the Barracuda until it strikes. As torpedoes like the Barracuda become more advanced, the ultimate submarine's only defense is to improve its stealth. Running silent has historically been the submariner's greatest advantage in a technological game of cat and mouse that's been escalating since World War II. Now naval engineers are developing top secret designs that give the USS Texas the ultimate advantage invisibility. Submarines have always been stealthy. But to the latest generation of ultimate submarines, like the USS Texas, stealth means more than hiding underwater. It means becoming what submariners call a hole in the water, achieving speed in utter silence. This is a critical innovation, because when a submarine loses the element of surprise, the results can be devastating. In 1942, the German Navy used the stealth of its Unterseeboot, the U-boat, to reign supreme. Roaming in wolf packs and striking almost invisibly, the U-boat sank supply ships by the thousands. But the U-boats had an Achilles heel. They had to surface at night to recharge their batteries. So the Allies armed warships and planes with radar and used this to locate the U-boats. The once feared hunters soon became the prey. Once they were located, they were in a way defeated already. The U-boats didn't stand a chance on the surface. They could dive and try to make a run for it, but their fate then would be sealed by sonar. So named because it stands for sound, navigation and ranging. A transmitter sends an electrical impulse from the surface ship, which releases a sound wave into the water, the classic ping often heard in submarine movies. Traveling at 1,400 meters per second, the sound waves bounce back from solid objects, revealing the hidden U-boat. During the war, sonar exacted a heavy toll on the mighty U-boats. For an ultimate submarine to remain undetected by modern sonar, it must become a hole in the water, quieter than the surrounding sea. In a laboratory in the United States, technicians are working to perfect stealth and make the Texas invisible. Lake Pondo Ray in Idaho is hundreds of kilometers away from the ocean and any potential adversaries. Cameras have never before had permission to film the cutthroat, 
the largest unmanned submarine in the world. Its job is to teach engineers how to make the Texas even quieter. This one-third scale model of the USS Texas is a perfect likeness right down to the top secret propulsor, specially designed to increase thrust and minimize noise. Inside, a massive array of batteries powers the submarine's brain, a bank of computers that pilot the model on a programmed course. At over 300 meters deep, this cold water lake is one of the quietest testing grounds in the world. It's perfect for evaluating classified designs like stealth battleships that are invisible to radar. Every waterborne vehicle has a unique acoustic signature, the sound made by water moving over its hull. Motors answering 70 RPM. Roger that. Vehicle's underway. If the Virginia-class submarines have an acoustic weakness, these men are among the few people on Earth who know about it. That's affirmative. Proceed to the south. Underwater microphones listen in as the submarine dives, allowing the Navy to hear what an enemy would hear. The hydrophones are so sensitive, we can detect snow falling on the water right now. Fine-tuning the design of this submarine to maximize stealth is an obsession. We've made very, very minute, very, very detailed changes, especially in the propulsor, that have made significant improvements in the acoustic performance of the propeller. Making a hole in the water means more than just building a mechanically and hydrodynamically quiet submarine. It means absorbing sound. Non-Navy sources say that most modern submarines are typically coated with a material called anechoic, or anti-echo. When a sonar ping strikes the submarine, this classified rubber-like material actually absorbs the sound, preventing it from being reflected back to the source. Stealth is crucial to the ultimate submarine's survival. But if the USS Texas and her sister the Virginia want to survive in the battlefield of the open ocean, they must also be able to see and hear the world around them in order to navigate, attack, and defend themselves against enemies. These submarines paint a picture of their environment with sound. It's our only way to know what's in front of us, what's to the left, what's to the right, and uh, where we have to go to avoid running into other ships in the sea. Obviously, we don't have windows, so when it's emerged, this, this is truth. The ultimate submarine can hear better than any submarine ever made before. It has 10 sonar arrays mounted in the sail, on the sides, under the bow, and one towed behind, all working with sound to produce a view of the underwater landscape. Each line on the screen represents a contact, anything in or on the water that makes a noise from a whale to a cruise ship to a fishing boat. Is a, this is a merchant ship, it sounds like just a coastal, coastal merchant, probably not anything real, real large. And what you're hearing when we're listening to this is actually is the screw turning in the water and air bubbles forming and then collapsing on the tips and the face of the blades, as well as just the sound of it turning and pro propelling the ship through the water. There are some threats that the Texas may not be able to hear until it's too late. A technological ghost from World War II has returned to haunt the oceans. In the last days of the war, the Allies devastated the German submarine fleet using radar. The Germans recognized the U-boat's fatal flaw that its mechanical engines periodically needed air to recharge their batteries. 
and every time a U-boat surfaced, it was dangerously exposed. So a brilliant German engineer, Helmut Walter, devised a way to keep U-boats underwater for longer. It was called Air Independent Propulsion, or AIP. The Type 21 U-boat was born. He had ideas which were revolutionary in a way. So he invented the streamlined submarine, capable of doing high speeds, was far ahead of his time. The Type 21 accomplished unprecedented stealth. Its secret was a massive bank of batteries that enabled it to remain submerged for longer, yet still reach speeds of 16 knots, faster than the Allied convoys on the surface. But the war ended before Germany could unleash air independent propulsion and the world's first ultimate submarine. Fifty years later, the concept of AIP resurfaced in both Germany and Sweden. The Swedish Navy's Gotland measures 60 meters, half the size of the Texas. It was built for coastal defense, so stealth was more important than firepower. The Gotland secret is its incredibly quiet Cockham Stirling engine. This uses a mix of diesel fuel and liquid oxygen to power a generator which in turn powers the ship's ultra-quiet electric motor. Encased in soundproofing, the Gotland's engine is so quiet and so hard to detect that in the past the US Navy has rented her from Sweden to use in war games. But if Sweden's Gotland-class submarine is quiet, this German sub is almost silent the 212 Alpha. It can't outrun or outgun a steel shark like the Texas, but it's powered by a chemical reaction so quiet that builders say it can disappear at will. The 212 Alpha was born in the same shipyards that would have built Valter's revolutionary AIP U-boat. Even design. We are uh, designing the shaping of the submarine. Today's German Navy isn't building killing machines, but rather sentries and spies to patrol shallow waters. The 212 Alpha's stealth begins on the outside. Its hull design slips quietly through the water, reflecting little sound. And interestingly, the welding is done on the spot. Computers cut every piece of the submarine, and before workers weld the hull sections together, they preheat them to give them maximum strength, a process so precise it measures errors in millimeters. The finished 212 Alpha is smaller than the Gotland and doesn't need a nuclear power plant or even the Gotland's mechanical engine to operate. We do not need any piston engine generators, clutches, or some, something like that. The old technology is gone. We have the new technology with fuel cells. To power this generation of submarines, the German Navy uses fuel cells. These are often cited as the future source of cheap energy for homes and cars. This is what the 212 Alpha sounds like when using its conventional diesel engine. But when it wants to slip silently below the waves, it switches on a bank of fuel cells. And with the flick of a switch, the 212 Alpha disappears. Yes, the boat is switched to silent mode now and we are switching on the fuel cell plant and the fuel cell plant powers the propulsion engine. This electrical engine runs with more than a thousand horsepower now and you don't hear anything. We are a hole in the water now. The German Navy won't reveal just how long and how fast the 212 Alpha can run underwater on its fuel cells. But they do say it can stay submerged and hidden for weeks on end. 
it's fine to have a stealthy submarine like a nuclear, but this is more. This is super stealth. Impressive as it is, super stealth alone doesn't make an ultimate submarine. A combination of firepower, endurance, and unlimited reach puts the Texas in a class of its own. But every submariner knows that the ocean is more powerful than any submarine ever built. One breach can flood an entire ship in minutes, and a minor incident involving mechanical failure or human error can turn an ultimate submarine into an incinerator. If catastrophe strikes, survival depends on the fast action of the crew and some ingenious devices that are revolutionizing underwater rescues. Nothing man can construct is impervious to the crushing forces of the deep, weapons of war, or human error. Before a crew dares take a submarine to sea, they must learn how to operate it flawlessly, and they must know how to keep it from killing them if disaster strikes. A collision against an undersea mountain 180 meters below the surface breaches the sub's hull. Surface, surface, surface. 55,000 liters per minute of freezing cold water are sent into the engine room. Then the situation goes from bad to worse. Collision, port side. Unrelenting pressure causes intake pipes and valves to burst. These men have just seconds to manage the crisis and save the submarine. One wrong move could kill them. Resume training. This scenario plays out daily in a Navy wet trainer. Caution them to adjust, split and roll. The submariners run the exercise again and again. This time, they just managed to stop the breach. This is where submariners learn everything they'll see, hear, and feel. Quartermaster sounding. When operating an ultimate submarine during a mission or a crisis. Scope is clear before they are handed the keys to a two and a half billion dollar submarine. They learn to dive and drive their new vehicle in the V-Scott, the Virginia-class ship control operator trainer. Deck to Ransel, head to third cavity. Jam dive. Jam, Jam dive. dive. This simulator is about as close to being out to sea without being out to sea that we're ever gonna get. Dive, dive. And with that comes the adrenaline of, of being underway. The pilot's role is critical in the event of a disaster. Flooding in the engine room. Let's see blow. Maintain a two-zero degree up angle. Maintain a two-zero degree up angle, pilot eye. Quarter and a half groups are blowing. Knowing how to surface the submarine in seconds may mean the difference between life and death. But every submariner knows that a much deadlier enemy can strike from within. Co red machine room, co red from the forward trim pump, priming pump. Fire. Prepare for emergency ventilation. This is one of the worst casualties that we could possibly experience. The entire crew, the entire submarine is at stake. This is like being trapped in a burning building. Smoke can cut visibility to zero. It starts wearing you down. Over time, you start getting tired, exhausted. Temperatures can quickly soar. If unchecked, they can even reach 2,000 degrees. Start perspiring pretty heavy, getting dehydrated. And that's the key, you don't want to get dehydrated. Submarines aren't just watertight. They're airtight, 
completely closed containers. A fire on board can suck the air from the crew's lungs. We don't have the luxury of calling for help and having assistance. If there's a fire, we have to put it out. It's a do or die situation. Training in real-time simulators like this is a submarine crew's best defense against an onboard catastrophe like fire. But no simulated training can defend them against one silent predator lurking in the dark water. It's one of the submarine's deadliest enemies, the mine. Since the end of the Vietnam War, mines have caused more damage to U.S. warships than all the other kinds of weapons combined that have been used against us. Finding mines is dangerous work. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, the U.S. Navy is perfecting a secret weapon, the UUV, or Unmanned Undersea Vehicle. These are advanced scouts that map minefields. The Bluefin 21 looks like a torpedo because it's designed to be shot from a torpedo tube. But this machine isn't designed to kill. Its mission is to save lives by identifying mines before they explode. Sacrificing a half million dollar UUV can save a multi-billion dollar submarine. Texas's ability to launch unmanned underwater vehicles, or UUVs, that can go out and conduct mine hunting and mine surveillance is a critical, critical capability. We started this green flag and transited this green dot here. Tom Barron of the Naval Undersea Warfare Center wants to test the mind mapping capabilities of the UUV. To see how the Bluefin works, he gives it the task of finding a shipwreck. What's the resolution of the... Uh... Uh, we go down, uh, this sonar goes down to 10 centimeters resolution. Okay. So we should get a pretty good picture of uh, whatever's laying on the seafloor. Yeah. The UUV pilots itself with artificial intelligence. It runs along parallel paths, 1.2 kilometers long and 150 meters wide. While staying on course, it must avoid unexpected obstacles and take pictures. The Bluefin can map 20 square kilometers of ocean in one mission, cruising for up to 18 hours on battery power. But if the UUV fails, mines can devastate a submarine. And when a submarine is in trouble deep under the water, the crew's only hope for survival is another kind of ultimate submarine. One built specifically to pull sailors from the jaws of death. It's the DSRV, or Deep Submergence Rescue Vehicle. The Navy calls it the Mystic. Kept permanently on call, the Mystic can go anywhere in the world, loaded on board a plane or carried on the back of a specially configured attack submarine. All it takes is a phone call. We should be able to be on a plane within four hours. Within 24 hours, the Mystic is on site. Using sonar, it listens for the crippled submarine's distress signal and zeroes in on its location. Right over the target. Every second is precious to a crew with a rapidly depleting air supply. The pilot establishes radio contact with the crew of the downed submarine. This is Mystic. This drill takes place in a tank that's merely nine meters deep. But the Mystic's fiberglass hull hides three interconnected spheres that can withstand the pressure of a dive one and a half kilometers deep. Once the pilot has a visual on the submarine's escape hatch, like we're right over. he carefully guides the Mystic into place and makes a watertight seal. In a real-life scenario, 24 men at a time would scramble through the hatch to safety and live to fight another day.
generations of submariners went to sea risking hidden underwater dangers, onboard fires and naval mines. The crew of the USS Texas faces these traditional perils with state-of-the-art equipment and the most advanced training in the history of the silent service. But they must also combat a new kind of enemy, one that attacks from multiple fronts, conceals its position and runs covert operations on land and sea. The threat of terrorism. This is where the ultimate submarine fully demonstrates its power to search and destroy. On the 12th of October 2000, the American destroyer USS Cole refueled in the port of Yemen. A small boat approached and detonated, punching a hole in the ship that measured 12 by 18 meters and killing 17 sailors. The coal attack was a chilling reminder that in the new century there was a new kind of global warfare. Enemies hiding in secret safe houses, plotting terror and capable of striking anywhere at any time. But terrorists like the coal bombers now face a formidable opponent, the ultimate submarine. It can be used to find and attack terrorists before they can strike. Radio con, log off the sub Submarines used to operate as lone wolves, going months without communicating with the fleet for fear of revealing their position. But today's ultimate submarine communicates with headquarters by releasing a small buoy that floats to the surface on a 600 meter cable. The boy will link the submarine to a communications network called ForceNet. And this network will allow all Navy assets on Earth to coordinate an attack. Radio Con, I. Have Raider bring the message to the Con. Yes, sir. Radio Con, route the message to the Con. ForceNet downloads a detailed picture of a terrorist base. Orders come from Navy Command. The submarine is to cruise in close to the coastline and land a SEAL team to confirm that the enemy is there. This is the type of mission the ultimate submarine was born to execute. It carries a nine-man SEAL team, the Navy's elite sea, air and land force. Officer deck, prepare to hover, prepare to conduct lockout trunk operations. A special lock-in, lock-out chamber allows the SEALs to exit the submarine underwater in the dark of night, unseen and unheard. Putting people ashore from a submarine is a difficult task because the other side is going to be looking for that submarine. They may have coastal radar, they may have aircraft, they may even have seafloor acoustic detection systems. The closer you bring the submarine in to five or ten miles, the greater the chance of detection and the greater the chance the submarine is going to run aground on an uncharted sandbar, a coral reef or something else. But delivering Navy SEALs to an enemy's doorstep in dangerously shallow water is just what this submarine does best. The SEALs float to the surface and head for shore on inflatables. Then they work their way inland until they find the enemy, surrounding its base and confirming its location. The hunt is over. The SEAL team relays the information back to the submarine. Oh, air contacts. Connie, I smell my whole threat emitters. is what you can see, see that. Yes, I'm Connie. It then sends the updated target information to ForceNet. Far out at sea, a warship fires a Tomahawk missile towards the target. Once the missile has been launched, 
the seals keep the terrorists pinned down until the tomahawk arrives. The missile screams towards the target at 885 kilometers per hour. GPS satellites download coordinates to the missile and the tomahawk locks in on the exact location of its target. If the target moves, the SEALs relay its new position to their submarine. The submarine relays it to Forcenet and the warship re-aims the tomahawk in mid-flight, ensuring a perfect strike. Radio SEAL Team Alpha reports mission complete, in route to our location. Radio Con I. One machine has made this possible. The Virginia class, the Navy's newest breed of ultimate submarine. It combines unprecedented endurance and stealth and formidable firepower with new capabilities to unleash a precision attack on any enemy anywhere on Earth. But this ultimate submarine has one final secret. The Navy has made her future-proof thanks to an ingenious design. Years from now, when new technology or weapon systems are developed, they can slice her in half, open her up, and update her design. The USS Texas will almost certainly be enhanced as technology improves. But unlike its predecessors, this ultimate submarine is built for the future.